Hey there, this is the Penny on Your Thoughts podcast, and I am your host, Penny Chason. I'm a board certified hypnotist, intuitive, and experiencer. This podcast is about tapping into your subconscious to create a more aligned and abundant life. By leveraging our subconscious, we can master our thoughts, frequency, and vibration. Fusing the conscious, subconscious, and our consciousness is the science of expansion and soul satisfaction. Each week, I'll share in-depth interviews or solo episodes. This podcast was created to share how you have the power to create infinite potential within you. It's my intention that you find this podcast empowering, inspiring, and full of possibility. Now grab your favorite beverage and let's go. Hey, welcome to this special episode of Penny on Your Thoughts. This week, we're sharing with you an encore episode. The episode you're going to listen to today has been one of my most popular episodes, and it has been one that has resulted in people leaving me comments about how something within this particular episode was a life changing or insightful moment for them. I hope you enjoy it. So let's dive right in. There are some surprising ways that we can get answers to our questions, that we can release things that will allow us to move forward in our life. This one may seem odd to some of you, but I know to a lot of my audience, They're going to go, oh yeah, absolutely, I do this. Your mind, when you are asleep, your conscious mind is offline, your body is resting, but your subconscious mind and your unconscious mind is still at work. Your unconscious mind being the part of you that operates your bodily functions, your immune system, your heart rate, your breathing. It's also where the reticular activating system is located. And it's the reticular activating system that will send a signal to wake you up if there's a bump in the night. It's I've mentioned it before. It's like that guard dog with the ear cocked up, always listening. It's the thing that changes for a mother when she has a baby. When you think, oh my gosh, I'm such a deep sleeper, will I hear the baby cry? Yes, you're going to hear the baby cry. (laughs) It's part instinct and it's part having that awareness that you now have an infant in the house and you need to be aware of the cry. You're literally priming your mind to alert you when you hear a baby's cry. But when we're sleeping, this is when short-term memory can get converted to long-term memory. It's when our body, through neurophysiological responses, can set in motion healing. This is why sleep is so important. You wanna be sure to get enough sleep, but not too much, because too little or too much sleep are both detrimental. Maybe I'll do an episode at one point on sleep. There is no set number of hours that is blanket for everybody. Typically, if I make it through five sleep cycles in a night, I'm good. For most people, a sleep cycle is an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and 30 minutes. That full sleep cycle allows you to get into REM state where we dream. So your subconscious mind is active when you're sleeping. It's converting short-term memory to long-term memory. If there are pathways that are no longer utilized, no longer needed, it can break those things down. Now, I have to put this in context a little bit because as hypnotists, we often talk about with neuroplasticity, when someone is changing a habit, that when you create a new habit, you're creating a new neural pathway. The old neural pathway doesn't go away. It's still there. So take, for example someone who 
drank too much. I'm not going to say alcoholic because that's at the far end of the spectrum, but say someone drank too much and they didn't like it, so they quit drinking. Or someone who smoked and they quit smoking because they didn't like it. That old neural pathway is still there. It's not uncommon to hear of someone who stopped a habit and then one day they're like, you know what? I'll have just one cigarette or I'll have just one drink. And then they're back to smoking or drinking or whatever it is, the habit. They fall right back into it. It's because that neural pathway is still there. But when we do things like shift beliefs and we literally knock out the structure of the old belief, then the subconscious mind is going to process that. It's one of the things that forces our brain into a state of reorganization when we do hypnosis work, when we do subconscious work, that subconscious success coaching with the conversational hypnosis is that we are literally rendering those old beliefs to be false. And once the mind recognizes they're false, those beliefs are no longer needed. So what can you do to optimize sleep to get what you want? Before I go to sleep at night, I actually do a self-hypnosis. And as a part of that self-hypnosis, I might give my subconscious mind a command such as find any beliefs that are preventing me from achieving blank and delete them. Search and delete. Or tonight reprogram my subconscious mind to feel safe earning X number of dollars. So if you're someone who grew up in a very modest household, maybe middle class, but you always heard your parents talk about people who had money were, you know, they were crooked, they couldn't be trusted, they were selfish. And while you know that there are a lot of great people with a lot of money who are doing wonderful things, they fly under the radar, they're making an impact in other people's lives more so than they are their own. You know this, you believe this, you believe that you're worthy of it on the surface level, but deep, deep, deep down, you always heard these stories. So you can tell your subconscious mind before you go to sleep, subconscious mind, in my sleep tonight, I want you to rewrite this story that wealthy people are good people, that good people with wealth do great things. And you can just do that every night. Now, let's take this a step further. This is where I love to play. This is an absolute playground, and that is dream time. Now, there are going to be people say, oh, I never dream. Unless you have certain diagnosed sleep issues, You do dream. We just don't remember. So many times we don't remember. And some medications can keep people from dreaming. But for the most part, we all dream. We just don't remember. So the first step in this whole process is when you lay down to go to bed at night, you tell your subconscious, remember my dreams and bring me the information in a way I can understand. Then you can tell your subconscious mind, sub, I want you to go into dream time and bring me the lessons that allow me to release beliefs around money that no longer serve me and then just go to sleep. Now, here's the thing. When you ask your subconscious mind to do this work in dream time, the answer does not always come in your dreams. The answer may come the next day, or it may come in a few days. Just suddenly you get a sign. You see something, you hear something, and instantly you're like, oh, that's the answer. Your subconscious mind has been working on that. When I wrote my number one international bestseller, Breaking the Fibro Code, just before that book went to the editor, I made an entire change in the people who I serve. But at the time I wrote the book, I was planning to work with people with fibromyalgia. In the morning, the book was to go off to the editor. I rewrote the entire introduction. And what I had been dealing with was I was 
bridging this gap between meeting the reader where they were and not offending the medical community. Because if you're offending the medical community, they're not going to share the book and the book would be beneficial to people. And I realized at a late moment, I'm like, you know what? My tone is in the tone of the client who's going to read the book, but the tone is not going to resonate with the practitioner who is going to feel, yes, this is going to be beneficial. So how do I bridge this gap and meet the reader where they are, but at the same time express the challenges that face medical providers without casting a bad light on medical providers because there are a great deal of healthcare workers out there who show up every day and give all of their heart. So what did I do? I went into dream time. I'm like, bring me the introduction to this book because I just didn't feel like I could send it off. I woke up at 4.30 in the morning and I'm laying there in bed and all of a sudden just a whole flood of information came to me. I didn't pass go. I didn't stop. I didn't pass go. I went straight to my computer, didn't even get dressed. And I sat down and I wrote 3,000 words in under an hour. My husband got up to go to work and he could hear me back there pecking away. And he came in to see what I was doing. I literally put my hand in his face because if I so much as broke my state for one minute... To answer his question, I was going to lose it all. I knew it because many, many times I get important information to share with my audience, to share with my clients, whether it's social media, podcast episode, in a one-on-one. I wake up anywhere between three and five in the morning. Sometimes it's early as two. And as I'm laying there just chilling out, I don't stress about waking up because I know that's my air fingers quote witching hour. When that information comes, I know I have to act on it in some way. Now, sometimes the information's not immediately meant to be shared. So I put it into my notes app on my phone so I can share it at a later date. And that's how I roll with that. So use your dream time. Tell your sub, bring me the lesson in a way that I can understand it. Remember and bring me the lesson in a way that I can understand it. And then tell your subconscious mind what you want it to do. Go into dream time and help me to understand how I can solve this issue or how I can connect with this person or what are the next steps in my business? How do I pivot moving forward? And that's it. That's the episode for today. I love, love, love dream time. Sometimes it's a bunch of metaphors. It makes no sense. Sometimes it makes perfect sense. Sometimes it sends me in a direction to research something. Something will come up and I'm like, well, what does this mean? And then I begin researching what came up and I find my answer there. And then sometimes it's just ordinary dreams. My brain is rehashing some things that it's, discarding from the past. And it's just like a slideshow of things from the past that really don't mean anything. And I've put zero meaning on it because of that. There are some great books out there on dream time. This is what I will tell you. When it comes to dream interpretation, if you're looking for someone to help you interpret your dreams, the best person in the world to interpret your dreams as you, because only you know what you were feeling and thinking in the dream and the context of everything in the dream. But I will tell you this, pay attention to numbers, pay attention to animals, pay attention to symbology, because those things, when you go and you research the meaning of those things as it pertains to dreams, you can sometimes find your answers in there. It's just plain as the nose on your face, as my grandmother would say. I really appreciated having you join me today for this episode of Penny on Your Thoughts. I would really appreciate it if you would take a moment and head over to your favorite podcast platform and leave a positive review about the podcast. It helps me to reach more people to help them to enlighten, elevate, and expand their lives. 
Be sure to subscribe to the show if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing you back here again next week.